Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. So good to be back with you here on Growing in Grace. I'm Mike with Joel. Growingandgrace.org is where you'll find our programs over the last 10 years. All of them are still on there, archived and ready to go. And perhaps if you're one of those wild people who went back to the beginning and started listening through all of them, you'll probably begin to see our own growth in this journey of grace. And uh, it's just a never-ending thing, and it's a great place to be. How you doing, Joel? Doing wonderful. And uh, yeah, over 514-minute podcasts over a a 10-year period. And anybody is bound to change at least a little during uh, that amount of time. And so while, you know, the core of what we talk about on this program has never changed, you know, we really we try to keep it simple, you know, talking about the ABCs and one, two, threes of of God's love and grace. And as we have talked this thing out over the last decade, you know, Cap and I have grown a little bit in our understanding of what it's all about. And so uh, I think it's right. You'll see, um, if you look, go back and listen, you'll you'll see kind of a, an evolution in our in our thinking. But again, the core has, has never really changed. It's been pretty consistent, I think. And in fact, I, I think we've had some people out there who recommend our podcast to people who, who would use the word consistent. And yeah. um, we've stayed focused on, on what the program is, is meant to be. And like you said, Joel, that the core really revolves around our identity in Christ and the finished, accomplished work that he has provided for us. And um, we've been talking for the last X number of weeks on the subject of forgiveness. And last week, we jumped into 1 John chapter 1, that a lot of Christians have been brought up in, in regards to confession of sins. So we can't go back over all of that. We covered quite a bit of ground in a short amount of time. If you have a chance, go back one week and check into that as we get ready to move forward from there. But a couple of things we can bounce back on here, Joel, that we did discuss toward the end of the program anyway, and that is if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, uh, that word sins in there, uh, it's a noun, it's not a verb, it's not speaking of every individual action of falling short, every sin that was ever committed by you, me, or anybody else. It's referring to a sin condition. We had a bigger problem, as bad as sin is, the action of sin, we had an even bigger problem. We were born into it. We were born in Adam. So it's a, it's a noun. That word sins in, in, in 1 John 1, 9 is a noun. And because of that, it's, it's pointing us to a sin condition that we were born into. And uh, we're going to kind of springboard off of that a little bit. Yeah, ever so important to uh, to focus on that, because like we talked about last week, people get confused. They have fear and, and worry. Have I confessed every last sin that I've ever committed? Do I need to confess every last sin that I've ever committed? If we confess our sins, and so the way that that's worded in, in English in many translations Again, it just uh, throws people off a little bit because really, indeed, it is a noun. It's if we confess the sin condition. And again, like we talked about last week, that was a message to unbelievers. That whole first chapter, John is talking to people. He's trying to help people to have fellowship with him and with God. There are people who don't have fellowship with him and with God because they're sin deniers. They've denied that sin is the issue, that sin is a problem. He's saying if you acknowledge that sin is a reality, God will be faithful with this forgiveness that he has already provided. He's already provided through the blood of Jesus, and as other places in the New Testament scriptures talk about, it's something that an unbeliever, when they believe this, they receive the forgiveness, the righteousness, the life, everything that was accomplished through Christ's death and resurrection, they receive that by grace, through faith never through their works, never through this confessing of every last sin. (laughs) It's just a matter of confessing, acknowledging that, yes, indeed, uh, I'm a sinner, and I need Jesus Christ, my Savior. Yeah, and Paul talked about this, and so did John. We'll get back to him in a minute, but Romans chapter 10, 
probably if you've if you've been a, a Christian in church for a while, this is a passage you're familiar with. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, Romans chapter ten nine, confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yikes. Four powerful words right there. <laughs> <laughs> For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. There's no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So several verses there, starting with Romans 10, 9. It's interesting, Joel, how we, we find in Romans three nineteen that the law was given to humble people, to close their mouths, to shut them up, to keep them from boasting, whereas the, the gospel has been given to open up our mouths, and it has provided us with this forgiveness that would bring us to a place where we confess Jesus is Lord. So are we against confession? No. Again, uh, as you pointed out before, Joel, confession is simply acknowledgement or agreement. We confess that Jesus is Lord. That's our confession. We don't have to confess it over and over again to remain saved. There's one confession that the Scripture points us to in this new covenant, and it's a confession of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's the thing. It's this confession, this acknowledgement, this agreement with God about sin as a reality and that Jesus Christ is Lord, through that confession, that acknowledgement, like you were reading there, again, like you said, awesome words, wonderful, exciting words from Romans 10. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's that simple. He doesn't say there that if you continually always confess your sins for the rest of your life, every time you sin, you need to confess it, then you'll be saved. No, he says this one confession, confessing the Lord Jesus Christ and believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that's how we're saved. And so when we sin, and, and we do, see, from that point on, it's not like we never sin again. The thing that we're trying to point out is that the confession that's needed is that confession of Christ as Lord. You know, so what if a person does sin over and over again, like I'm talking about? Uh, they receive the Lord Jesus Christ, and then they sin. Well, then, are they unforgiven at that point? When you sin, do you become unforgiven then? And so then you need to be forgiven again. And so, well, I need to confess my sins, and so God will forgive me again. Well, what we're saying here is that that one-time confession you received, through that confession of Christ, you received the life of Jesus Christ. You received the forgiveness that Jesus provided on the cross once and for all. See, Jesus did that sacrifice how many times? He did it one time, and it, of course, it covers every single last one of your sins because, like you were saying earlier, Cap, it's not each and every individual sin that kept us from God. It was that sin condition, born in Adam, born with that condition of sin. And so when you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, you receive the gift that Jesus provided once and for all, already on the cross. Yeah, he doesn't have to go back and, and remake the gift. Right. And, and the other thing, coming back to what John was talking about, in order to believe God raised Jesus from the dead, naturally one would also have to believe that Jesus came in the flesh in human form, right? Mm -hmm. So as believers, our ongoing confession isn't meant to be focused on our sinful failures that God remembers no more. Our confession is rooted in who he is, and in the belief in what he has done. So religion will continue to advertise 1 John 1, 9 on TV and radio and billboards for Christians to have to confess each and every sin, but that's totally out of context. I mean, think about this. Uh, the Apostle Paul, who wrote the vast majority of the New Testament, never once told us to confess our sins to be forgiven. Right. Never. Think about that, because that would have been a pretty big deal that you think Paul not only would have he addressed it once, he would have addressed it many times. Mm -hmm. and, and even John didn't address it once. He was addressing something else, the confession of Christ. And he talks about that 
again, we can't go through back through everything that he said in, in, in the first chapter, but he comes back to some things that he said in the first chapter of his epistle in, in 1 John chapter 4. And this ties into what we just talked about in Romans 10. John says, whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. Think about that. So confessing, not your sins over and over again, but confessing that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. So my question is, if you sin, does that mean God no longer abides in you? That you no longer abide in God? And here's the other implication, Joel, that religion won't say it in these words, but here's what they're implying. Because by saying that when you sin, when you commit an act of sin, if you confess that sin, God is going to forgive you. Well, the implication there is every time you sin, you're not forgiven anymore, right? <laughs> I know that they don't come out and say it in that way, but that that's really what, what's being said. And so, of course, every time you sin, it's not that you stop abiding in God or that uh, he stops abiding in you. That would be silly. But we're focusing back in on this one confession of Jesus Christ. So what John is saying here in his fourth chapter ties into what he was saying in the first chapter when he was talking about con confession. And, and so, yeah, Joel, the, 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 there's so much more that can be said about this. And, and there's some other things that, that John said in that fourth chapter, too, uh, reminding believers that you, you can know the, the, the Spirit and whether it's from God by whether they agree that Jesus came in the flesh. Mm hmm Yeah, Jesus being having come in the flesh, like you say, that is so important. That's we talked a little bit about that last week and how the Gnostics they denied that. They didn't believe that. And so um, you know, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And uh, as we wrap up uh, for this week, uh, just to reiterate something you were saying, you know, Paul dealt with sin in the church a lot. A lot of his epistles, <laughs> he spent a great deal of time dealing with sin that was going on in the church. And not once did he ever tell them, now, you've done this thing, or there are people in this church doing that thing. Tell them, confess their sins, and God will forgive them. No, he addressed the entire church each in each of his letters as saints. <laughs> they had just done some things that weren't of Christ, you know, that, that were of the flesh. And he was encouraging them and exhorting them to stop doing that. But he never told them that they had to confess their sins. And Paul was big throughout his epistles on this idea that we are in him and he is in us. And it's a once for all thing. It's not like you get placed into Christ and then you're out of Christ. And then you're in Christ again when you confess your sins. And then you're out of Christ again. And then you're in and then you're out. It, that would be no life at all. Once and for all, Jesus paid the price. One time we received the gift, and the gift is ours forever. And that's where we'll be heading next week, this forever fellowship that we have with God. Through that one confession, we have fellowship with God forever. Next week on Growing in Grace. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.